cognitive distortions. Where do they come from? Why do they impact our lives? And how do we make them go away? Welcome to Normalize the Conversation. I'm your host, Francesca Reigeter, and today I'm joined by Naomi Riley. After suffering a traumatic brain injury due to a distracted driver, Naomi's recovery became a story of gratitude, perseverance, and mindset transformation. In this episode, I sit down with Naomi to discuss the profound impact mindset has on our mental health and daily life. Join us as Naomi shares her journey from personal crisis to advocacy, offering profound insights on mental reorientation and tackling today's pressing issues. Naomi, thank you so much for joining me today. I am very excited for our conversation. It is perfect timing for me, but before we begin, I just want to check in. How are you really? I am doing very well this morning. Thank you for asking. How about yourself? I'm having one of those days. I just had my neighbor, one of my best friends, my bonus grandmother. I went into her unit this morning with a cup of coffee and was like, 26 is so hard. I don't know what I'm doing. Everyone else is on line buying houses and moving in with their boyfriends or getting married and getting these jobs. And I'm like, I'm 26 and I am not anywhere near any of that. And I'm trying to build a nonprofit, slowly making strides, but not where everyone else is. And I just felt so overwhelmed. I think that that is, first of all, what you're doing as far as your nonprofit is amazing and commendable and should be really just awarded in itself. So I really give a lot of accolades to people that build nonprofits because it's probably one of the hardest jobs that we have. Yeah, we can come together and we can, we can you know, say we're going to do this for a great cause. But at the end of the day, these are change makers that are helping our communities and our society become better. And a lot of the times, you know, the leaders of the nonprofits don't get paid. They just really know in their hearts that they need to help create change. And so creating the conversation around suicide prevention is so, so key. 20, 25 years ago, there was nothing like this. And so, you know, having a forthright person like yourself is amazing. So just keep you keep that down in your heart, knowing that you're that God's directing you to to keep moving forward with this. Now we can also have our own personal passions and other areas that we want to strive in. And so I encourage that as well. I think there needs to be a healthy balance. There does. And first of all, thank you. I really appreciate that. It's so hard when you're trying to figure out who you are, who you want to be, how do I get there? And I just think for me personally, being online and seeing everyone else seem to know what they're doing. And I know that a lot of people don't have it figured out and I'm not the only one, but I convince myself I am every single time I open Instagram. It's so difficult to kind of keep that mindset of I'm doing what I like to do. I'm enjoying it and I want to keep going. It's going to get better. I'm going to be successful. Yes. Yes. No matter where you're at in life, we can all have crises that go on within us. You can be the most successful person and still have a type of mindset where I think my life is falling apart, right? Or you can just be in a really dark spot and 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 be in that crisis mode of not knowing where my next step is. I've done a lot of uh, reflection on my journey and where I have been. And for me, it was always, let's hone in to my inner self and figure out what are the next steps that I need to take to move forward my next goal. And, you know, my, let me give you a little history on myself is I was a child that was, when I was a child, I was diagnosed with an illness. They thought I had had it at the age of three. I wasn't diagnosed until I was seven. And so my parents were told at, you know, when I was young that I would be in a wheelchair by the time I was 18. So I had the, when I understood what was really going on, I kind of had the crisis mode in my brain that early, right? And so my brain was like, no, you got to run from this. You got to, you got to keep running. 
And so I've had that in me to keep going and, and fighting and, and just going, right? So fast forward, I was able to walk and, and, and do everything. And I was able to have three children that I love. Now they're all grown adults. Um, and that's, you know, another, uh, not a dilemma, just helping them navigate through, you know, life. It, it can be, can be hard, a brain injury and several other injuries. And I was diagnosed with something called trigeminal and occipital, occipital neuralgia, meaning my brain was affected and another, you know, kind of disease would come into my life. But when I was going through my brain injury, I learned a lot of tactics that were really, really key to moving forward. You know, our mental health plays a huge part in every single aspect of our life. So my team and I put together something called the Tax Pledge Project, where we take 10 of our country's biggest epidemics and dilemmas that we're seeing in society today. This goes from distracted driving, discrimination, acts of violence with or without weapons, bullying and cyberbullying, but we're helping to raise mental health. We're showing that our mental health is playing a huge part of all of these epidemics that we're seeing. Just take, for instance, if there's bullying or cyberbullying going on, it's not the person that's being bullied against. It's the person that's being the bully. And it's, it's so mental health in a nutshell, there's a lot of different scenarios when it comes into that. And any little thing can affect our mental health from a bully, from outside scenarios, from what others have got going on, the comparison syndrome, the 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 things that are like, oh my gosh, what are they going to do? Are they going to judge me for who, for who I am? And, you know, all of these things. And it's, it does play a huge part. You know, it does. We do have that comparisonitis syndrome. And also, a lot of us do. We want to be like the Joneses but we don't need to be like the Joneses. So there's a lot of gray in, in between. Our goal was to show individuals, okay, here's what I need to do with my mental health. Here's what I need to do to move forward. And here are some tax- tactics I can do to better my own life, but then better the lives of others around me. That is one really big key on our mental health. And when we have that mindset, that positive mindset, we, we can wake up every single day of our life and just have that, oh my gosh, what am I going to do with my life today? Here's some tips that I learned when I was in rehab that were very helpful to me. Now, mind you, I try to do these every day and I notice now when I don't do them, I get myself into some trouble, the outlook for my day. One of the best things that you can do for your mental health is to wake up every morning and just be thankful, be in the moment, be thankful that you have a roof over your head, you have a home provided or meals provided to you, you have the ability, the freedom around you to be able to do the things that you can do. Because a lot of the world does not have that right now. We're seeing a lot of um, in the Middle East and, and all over the place. Practicing gratitude is probably one of the best things. And then, you know, the next thing that you want to do to move forward in a good direction is to focus on the things you need to focus on that. Day. When I had my brain injury, like I said, I, there was a lot of things I couldn't do and I didn't want to go to rehab. I just wanted to live in that state of, I'm never going to be able to do anything again. And, you know, I couldn't walk right. I couldn't talk right. People had to bring me back and forth to work on things and, you know, go to rehab and whatnot. And I had to eliminate all the distractions in my life to make sure that I could focus on what I needed to focus on. Just focusing on one step at a time to move in the direction that you want to do is going to be another good, good key. (laughs) Those are so important. There's so many factors impacting our mental health. And one thing I've noticed, you love that you said it was that gratitude. Because lately, something I've done is on my whiteboard in the morning, I write down the date and I write down something that I'm grateful for, something that I'm looking forward to that day and something that's important to do that day. And I started this about less, just under a month ago. And it's really changed the way I woke up because 
a lot of times I wake up, oh my goodness, I have so much to do. I haven't accomplished anything. I didn't accomplish anything I needed to yesterday. I'm so far behind. And Mm -hmm. I just start in that the world is ending, crisis, chaos mindset before I have a cup of coffee, which is Mm -hmm. the worst thing in the world because I did not function before coffee and I'm ready in crisis free coffee. And learning that just by finding something to be grateful for kind of changes right off the bat that there is something good in my life instead of everything's bad. And then here's something I'm going to focus on. And as long as I accomplish that today or a piece of that today, then it was a good day instead of ending the day with, oh my goodness, I didn't do anything. I'm failing. Because going to sleep failing and waking up feeling like the world is ending is just, it was killing my mental health. Yes, it does. It definitely it really can destroy your overall outlook for what you can get done in this world. And, you know, for the listeners out there that are going through difficult times, you know, make sure that you are just taking back, taking, taking a few seconds. There's a verse in the Bible that says, be still and know. And I have really relied on that lately because You know, we see the world around us. We see what's going on in Israel and Gaza. You really feel for those people and all the children. And I question myself, why is this happening? Why would God allow something like this to happen? And we can have that negative mindset of what is happening to this world. But we as Americans have the ability to do so many things, so many great things. Most of us have iPhones or smartphones and and what we can do now with those things are, are pretty amazing. And and so for any of your listeners that are just in a dark spot, you know, you just want to encourage them to take a step back. Look at the things that you have in your life right now and say, "Okay. I have this. I have this. It could get worse. <laughs> I'm not in the Middle East. I'm not in a spot of war and turmoil." So it's really important. And and then practice that gratitude every morning. Just say, thank you, thank you, thank you for the world that I have around me. And, and keep relying on those people, your true trusted people that you can talk to. Because it's not okay to not be okay alone. It's okay to be not okay when you're talking and you're working through it. Yes, absolutely. And I think with everything going on in the world, it is so easy to question everything that's happening and why is it happening? And I found for me a big thing that helps is how can I feel powerless? What is something that I can do? And I'm so grateful that I have an iPhone, I have social media, I can post resources, that I can share places people can donate, that I can go volunteer at food banks, I can help package. Mm-hmm food that can be sent over. There's things I can do fundraising and being able to move from that feeling of powerless and there's nothing I can do to, it may seem so small in the grand scheme of things, but that mm-hmm. one small step really helps me feel grateful that I have, I'm so lucky to be where I'm at and have what I have. And here's something I can do that just inside me Makes, I'm a big, I'm really big on volunteering and giving back in any way, shape, or form. What makes me very happy. So finding those ways to be grateful and use that gratitude to do something that helps you, whether it is volunteering and giving back, or whether it's focusing on you and what you need to work on that day, or focusing on your future and your goals. Finding that thing that really helps you move from that feeling of gratitude to that feeling of I'm getting somewhere. I'm doing something. I'm making an impact. It could get worse. (laughs) I'm not in the Middle East. I'm not in a spot of war and turmoil. So it's really important. And and then practice that gratitude every morning. Just say, thank you. Thank you. Thank you for the world that I have around me. And, And keep relying on those people, your true trusted people that you can talk to. Because it's not okay to not be okay alone. It's okay to be not okay when you're talking and you're working through it. Yes, absolutely. And I think with everything going on in the world, it is so easy to question everything that's happening and why is it happening? And I found for me a big thing that helps 
is how can I feel powerless? What is something that I can do? And I'm so grateful that I have an iPhone, I have social media, I can post resources, that I can share places people can donate, that I can go volunteer at food banks, I can help package Mm -hmm. food that can be sent over. There's things I can do, fundraising, and being able to move from that feeling of powerless, and there's nothing I can do to, it may seem so small in the grand scheme of things, but that Mm -hmm. one small step really helps me feel grateful that I have, I'm so lucky to be where I'm at and have what I have. And here's something I can do that just inside me makes, I'm a big, I'm really big on volunteering and giving back in any way, shape or form. What makes me very happy. So finding those ways to be grateful and use that gratitude to do something that helps you, whether it is volunteering and giving back or whether it's focusing on you and what you need to work on that day or focusing on your future and your goals, finding that thing that really helps you move from that feeling of gratitude to that feeling of, I'm getting somewhere, I'm doing something, I'm making an impact. We could get hit so hard with all of these negatives every part in, in our day, right? Just If we wake up every morning and just say, you know what, today's going to be a great day. It sets your mindset off for positive day. Today, I did not wake up and I did not practice that. And I can tell you it's only 1130 my time right now. And I was just like, oh my gosh, can my day get worse? So amazing how just that small mindset shift can make such a difference. I mean, I struggle with severe depression. It's so easy for me to get into that mindset of Mm -hmm. it's never going to get better. But being able to start the day with, I can do this. Instead Mm -hmm. of I can't do this, at least gives me that energy to try instead of feeling completely just powerless and hopeless and stuck in that. I think just betting on yourself, right? You want to turn around and look at everything that you have done and accomplished so far, no matter what you, no matter where you are, right? Okay. So a lot of us entrepreneurs, at least, um, are forward thinkers and we don't really like look back and reflect on all the things that we have done. We're always just like, oh, what's next? And and so, uh, you know, a good friend of mine was like, hey, why don't we, you know, take a step back and look at all the things that you've done so far. So reflection is really, really big um, for a great mindset of your mental health as well. Turn around. If you volunteered or if you've done something for a charity or for anything, um, turn around and look at that and go, hmm, well done, the good and faithful servant. That's another verse in the Bible. I'm, I'm, I'm a Bible follower. I take everything back to different verses in the Bible that say, okay, all right, we're supposed to live our lives like this. And you know what? Our mindset really matters when we're doing this. And it really, we can, I can, I can see the whole correlation when we're doing thing, good things for others. And we're helping others out. Our project is 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 doing a challenge starting at the end of August. It's called the Do More Good Challenge. And so we're challenging any organization throughout the nation and the world, actually, just to do more good. And lots of fun things to really just help organizations and people understand that if we do more good in this world, it's going to come back around to us. Doing good really helps. Change. A lot of times for me, I feel like I'm not doing enough, that I'm not good enough. And mm-hmm. I am my own biggest bully and self-critic. And when I do good things, if I'm a good person, I am making an impact. I am doing things instead of sitting there like, I'm a terrible person. I've accomplished nothing. The world's ending. I'm not doing anything about it. I really am that person. <laughs> Every day, all day, the world is ending. Yes, the world is going to keep turning whether or not I do something. But when I do something good that makes an impact, that makes me feel like I made an impact, it helps me start to form that self-love that I'm doing something instead of I'm not worth anything. Yes, yes, exactly. Do you, okay, around Christmas time and and the holidays, I don't know if you've known about this, but it's the coffee shops and the drive drive throughs people will normally sometimes buy a coffee for the next person in line behind them. So we thought, why don't we start, we'll start a do, go, do more good challenge where we are encouraging 
Anyone that's involved with Tax Pledge, anyone can sign up for Tax Pledge. It's a 10 in one smart play saying, hey, I'm, I'm so done with all these things that are going on in our nation and globally, we're going to stand up against these. What we decided is we're going to challenge organizations, individuals, and schools to do more good. They can act together as a group. They can act together as a classroom. They can act together as an individual. And we're giving away prizes for the most creative, the most outreach, and scholarships, and things like just to encourage people to do it. Because what happens is that, that psychological change in your mind right? And why wouldn't we want to do this for each other? Why wouldn't we want to put out more good for each other? So we just ask people to document everything that they do and see at the end of this challenge, how they feel, but then all the good that they've done. That's amazing. Because when you start looking back, like you said, it's so easy to be this forward thinker and I need to do more and I need to do more. But when you look back and you see all the small things, all those small steps you took and how big they actually are, It just makes such an impact. Yeah, this talk is about suicide prevention. And I had a good friend of mine. I lost her to mental illness in 2018. And we always can go back to the should have, would have, could have, right? And be that one person for another person. To listen, to, to talk to, to understand what they're going through. And to really say, here, I'm here for you. No matter what you're going through, I am here for you. Now we have crisis lines. Anyone can dial 988 or touch 988, whatever it is, not dial anymore. Let's, 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 that's aging myself. And I'm sorry to say that, but you know, you can reach out to someone now, it, which we have, so, there's so many different areas to reach out to someone. And, and so it's important that getting back to a smile, a, you know, buying someone coffee, a little act of kindness can go so, so far. It really can. And I'm so sorry for your loss. But when we do these small acts of kindness, it also helps us feel more connected to the people around. Mm-hmm. Someone does something nice for us. It makes us feel really good and like we're not alone. Going back to what you said, it's okay not to be okay. But talk about it. Find yes. that support system because when you have that support system, when you have people around you, when you feel connected to the world, it helps you find hope. And with that hope, you can mm-hmm. keep going another day. Yeah. 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 There's some scriptures in the Bible too that talk about not being okay, but just making sure that you're talking about it. You're not, you're not uh, yourself. That is one thing that is not okay to do because that's where we get in trouble on brains take over. And and again, when our brains are taking over in a crisis mode, we don't know how we're going to act. We have another uh, that is on our team. She came to us about a year ago and lost her 14-year-old brother to a crisis mode and and mental illness. And it was very unfortunate because he was 14 years old. So his brain wasn't finished fully developing. And so when we are in crisis mode, we never know on how our brains are going to act. He told one person and that one person didn't do anything. And so from there on, he took the ability to do some self-harm. That's not okay. You know, and, and so we want to make sure that we're reaching out not only to our trusted people, but also to professionals that can help guide and direct us to make sure that we are doing the right things when we are in a crisis state of mind. There's so many, you know, youth out there that are struggling with their mental health because of what they've gone through. And that's not any of their fault. A lot of them were subject to COVID and they had to stay home for a few years and, and they've had to adjust to some things that haven't been so normal. And over the past 40 years, we've seen our society change so much, especially digitally, that it's hard to keep up and it's hard for young people to understand all these changes are a lot. <laughs> And so we want to definitely help them as much as we can. And so just going back to the, make sure that we're talking about issues and getting through them as as best as we can is really important. Yes. Talking about what we're going through, what we need, and then also being able to respond to people who reach out to us with Mm -hmm. kindness, with compassion. And maybe we don't know what to do. Maybe we don't know how to help, but letting them know that they're not alone it's a really mm-hmm. big start. And letting them know, I don't know what to say, but how can I be there? How can I support you? Mm-hmm. Maybe it's recommending 
to call 988 or text the crisis mm -hmm. hotline. Maybe it's going online and helping them find a therapist or some kind of support system or understanding awareness, a podcast that can help them, a nonprofit that can help them, community groups that can help them. So maybe we don't know what to do, but always being able to start with, you're not alone. Mm -hmm. How can I be there for you? Here's the resources I know. I hope this helps. A lot yeah. of times, like you said, someone reaches out and if it's invalidated, if they're gaslighted, if they're not believed, if they're just not responded with compassion, it can really impact what they're going to do next, if they're going to ever reach out to you again. So being able to respond with compassion and know you don't have to know what to say, you don't have to have all the answers, but hopefully you can just remind them that you're not alone. Amen. Amen. They are not alone. They are just not alone. Yeah. it's We all go through those dark periods in our life, no matter what age we are, we all have challenges and how we change is inevitable and how we adapt to change is, is going to be probably one of the hardest things that we go through in life because it starts out as our youth and, and it ends even in our older ages. And it's redeveloping who we are too. If, if something's not working in a job situation or if there's a divorce or a breakup with a relationship, those can kind of cause the crisis modes but reinventing who we are should never be a problem say for instance you're a student and you've chosen to take a, a career path in in a, in a direction that you thought you wanted in high school you get there and then you realize oh my gosh i don't like this it's okay it's okay start honing in on your next craft <laughs> and redeveloping who you are. It's okay to be a constant learner. I am a constant learner now. I developed something called the savant syndrome after my car accident because all of my neural pathways had to be redeveloped. I couldn't walk, talk, understand sentences, a lot of different things. And so when I finally came to and I understood what was, you know, really happening and how my world was, you know, changed for now the rest of my life, I wanted to learn and learn and learn and learn. And so I'm a constant researcher and learner. What can we do to make life better for others? Wherever you're at, wherever you're at in life, you can always change your direction. Yes, learning to adapt. I'm not good at that at all, to be honest. <laughs> My new thing is just saying, I can't control it. I can't control it. No one talks to me about it because they don't have control. And if you talk to me about it, I'm going to get really stressed and I'm going to panic. So mm -hmm. that's the funny thing. I'm like, don't talk to me about things that I can't control because I will just panic because I'm not good with change and I'm not good with things outside of my control. So I'm not yes. and I'm avoiding, but it's you got to do what works for you in the moment. But learning yes. that also, like what you said, you don't always know what you want when you're 14 and you're in high school and you're like, ah, oh, this is the career path that I'm going to choose. And then you're in your 20s and suddenly you're like, mm, I actually don't want to code for the rest of my life or... Mm -hmm. I just don't like the path that I took and I want to change. For me, it was coding. That's why that was my mm -hmm. reference. I went through and got a master's in information systems, thought I wanted to code um, but a lot during class and exams. And when I graduated, I, that was not what I wanted to do. Yeah. And being able to stand behind that, I this is not the path for me. This is not mm -hmm. what I want. And I'm going to try something else with her scary. I don't like change. And I like to think I have everything planned out at all times. And I've learned that I don't. Yeah. Learning to be able to learn and being okay with learning every day instead of thinking you have everything figured out is again, one of those mindset shifts that lets you know yeah. that it's okay to not know and it's okay to be figuring it out and it's okay to ask for support. Yes. Yes. It's okay. There is something out there called the serenity prayer. I want to encourage everyone to, to learn about it. In there, it says, grant me the acceptance to accept the things that I cannot change. And it just, of course, when, when we're moms, a mom of three kids, and I wanted to control everything my, my kids did, right? And to a point. But you kids, you grow, you, you develop on your own. And then we hope that we give you life tools to move forward in the positive direction. Now that sometimes it doesn't happen and you, you have to make, you know, people make mistakes all the time, but as long as we learn from these mistakes, 
that's okay. And just be like, okay, well, I did that. Uh, okay, mistake learned. The fear of judgments comes into play too. What is everybody going to think about me? That's, that's something that we shouldn't fear. One thing that I did learn was that fear should really be looked at as phase, everything, and rise. Because discomfort is only temporary, but growth is permanent. So think about that. Yeah. So everything in rise. I love that. one of my fears prior to my accident was it was kind of being afraid of heights, right? And I was starting to, and I, I had had three kids at that point. I was just living life. I wasn't really, I was kind of just going through the motions of, of what life was being the mom and making sure my kids had everything. But after my car accident, I think that was the hardest thing that I went through, just saying, okay, now I have to redo everything. And then my daughter was going through a hard time at one point and, and her mental health was challenged. And, and so I said to her, if there's one thing that you can do in life, what would it be? I said, you could do anything in this world. What would it be? Climb a mountain, go through, you know, river rafts, jump on an airplane. What would it be? You know, and I said, I'm here for you no matter what you need. And, and, and so she, she goes, well, let's go jump out of an airplane. And so, you know, at that point, I'm like, okay, let's face everything and rise. And so we did it, you, and, it. you know, we did it. Yeah. And, you know, and, and so, you know, we did it, you know, obviously we have our, our instructors with us, but I got over that fear. Yes. It gave me severe anxiety. Oh my gosh, I'm jumping out of a plane. But once I did it, it gave me impeccable growth to know that I could get through that discomfort because I made it through to the other side. Now I'm not saying go do something crazy like I did, but just know that if you're challenged with a hard situation, what would happen if you looked at that situation and said, I am going to get through this no matter what it is, I'm going to get through it. And I'm going to come out stronger on the other side. That's something that you really need to remember that the discomfort is only temporary, but the growth will be permanent. Fear really can be paralyzing. My therapist lately is something she's saying to me to try to face it. She's like, what's the worst thing that could happen? Okay, do it anyways. <laughs> I'm a catastrophe. The worst thing that can going to happen is going to happen in my head. Mm -hmm. So I'm like, yeah, it's okay. But she's yes. kind of been forcing me. She's like, okay, if you're afraid to speak up because something's going to happen, speak up anyways and see what happens. Maybe your worst case scenario will happen. Then we move on from there. Maybe it won't. And you'll be very surprised that you can have a voice learning that you can face those fears. Sometimes. I mean, try it. I'm encouraging you just to try it once. Maybe baby steps, but just try it because you'll feel so much better. It it's just, it's a, it's an eye-opening experience. I do public speaking a lot right now. And I had a fear of being back on a stage. Of course, after my car accident, because I, I had tremors, like you would not believe. And, and anytime I got afraid, my tremors would just get so bad. But I was able to get back on stage last October. And the first time I got back on stage, I was tremoring a little, but not bad, not as bad as I thought. And it was only for a minute, but I was just like, hey, I did that. And then so after that, I've been on six or seven stages after that. So now I'm more comfortable with that arena of being on stage and sharing my story of what I've gone through. And so I think once you face one small fear, you're going to see that, hey, I made it through that. I might be able to do another one because it's exhilarating and your adrenaline gets there. Your adrenaline is like, oh. Oh, this is what it feels like. It, I feel alive again. I feel alive. We can get, we can just get in this complacency type of syndrome or, and just, oh, this is life and this is what I'm going to go through. And, and I'm complacent and I'm okay. And I'm just okay. But if we really want to see some growth happen in our own lives, no matter spiritually, existentially, wherever we want to see it happen, we are going to have to face those fears and challenges and we're going to have to move forward with them. Face those fears and it all goes back to mindset. It all mm -hmm. goes back to being able to recognize that the world is not going to end. I'm always going to go back to that for me. And we can mm -hmm. do it.
and it's just starting your day, starting an activity, starting something with, I can do this, I can get through this, I believe in myself, instead, I'm scared and I can't do it, can really just make all the impact. As we are wrapping up, what's one final piece of advice you'd like to give to our listeners? Oh my gosh. Well, I am definitely going to give our books, uh, our book on mindfulness to your listeners, as well as a textbook book for adults. I think it will be a very, very good asset for y'all to have. And then also we'll attach our do more good challenge uh, that anybody can take part of. So for your listeners, just, just do more good. You're going to feel so much better. Thank you so much for listening to Normalize the Conversation. Don't forget to subscribe, rate, and review. This podcast is an initiative of inspiring my generation, focusing on normalizing the conversation, bringing education and awareness to the forefront, and amplifying global voices to spark change and hope. Inspiring My Generation is a 501c3 nonprofit organization on a mission towards suicide prevention through awareness, conversation, education, and support. Connect with us on Instagram at Inspiring My Generation and visit our website, inspiringmygeneration.org, to learn more about our work and how you can make a difference.